Okay, so we are starting a new unit. It is our suspense unit. This is by far one of my favorites that we do throughout the year. Um, so the first thing we have to do is learn what does the word suspense mean. So suspense is an intense feeling of insurity that the reader or audience experiences while waiting for an outcome. An author creates suspense in the reader's mind, causing him or her to feel anxious about what will happen next by using specific literary elements. So if you've ever been reading a, st a story or watching a movie and feeling a little nervous for your main character, concerned about what's going to happen, unsure of their safety or the outcome of the conflict, then you were feeling suspense. Okay, so there are seven elements that we're going to be focusing on, uh, seven elements of suspense that an author can use to create suspense throughout the text. You'll notice at the top it says literary elements, and I have um, an acronym here. It says my crop. And I know that's a little funny to say, but I love a good acronym. So each one of these letters here in my crop is going to represent one of our seven elements. So our first one is mood then imagery, characterization, repetition, onomatopoeia, pace, and foreshadowing. So as you're skimming over this list that we have here of these seven elements, I'm pretty sure that a few of them are familiar to you. We've already talked about characterization at great length um, this year, but in addition to that, I think some of these other terms are familiar. So what we're going to do is review each one so that we're feeling confident and we're all on the same page. Okay, so our first element of suspense is mood. Uh, mood is the, the atmosphere or feeling the reader has about what they are reading. So mood is all about you, okay, how you feel about what you're reading. Um, readers will often have an emotional response to what they are reading. So maybe you're reading, you know, a novel and there's a chapter that really makes you feel happy or excited because there's a lot of positive things happening for our main character. Or maybe um, it's the opposite. The chapter has a lot of devastating or tragic things happening to our main character and you're feeling sad. Maybe it's something like you're feeling curious as to what's going to happen to the main character as they're trying to overcome their conflict. Or you're frustrated. I know I've definitely had this feeling while reading. Maybe you're frustrated because the character keeps making the wrong decision or the character's, you know, problem or conflict is, you know, very difficult for them to solve. So if you've had any of these types of emotions while you're reading, then that is the mood. It's about how you are responding to what you are reading. What's interesting is that just like I was explaining with my little examples about a happy chapter and a sad chapter, your mood can evolve throughout the story based on how the events are playing out. So the plot dictates how we feel. If there's something you know positive happening or something that's more negative or tragic, that in turn is going to affect our emotion as the reader. So mood, you're thinking about yourself and how you read while you're how you feel while you're reading. Okay, so onomatopoeia, this is our second one. I am confident that you have heard this word before. Um, so this is the use of sound words as they mean. And I just put a few here. Um, my examples, they make me think of like a comic book. So we could have pow, bang, zap, creak, thud. So anytime we're reading and there is a word that's being used as a sound, that is an example of onomatopoeia. So if you've been watching a horror movie and you see that character walking into the old abandoned building and the doors creaking open, that sound is creating a little bit of suspense for us. So whether you're viewing a movie or a TV show, or reading a short story in, or a novel, those little like sound effects, those examples of onomatopoeia are there for a reason to hopefully create some type of suspense for the reader. A repetition, this one I think is pretty easy for us to remember. So sometimes um, when we're reading, an author might repeat a line or a word for effect. So if we're watching a movie or reading a story and they keep mentioning, you know, Nobody is supposed to go in the basement. Stay away from the basement. Don't go in the basement after dark. 
they keep repeating the word basement, basement, basement. That kind of lets us know as the reader that, you know, something's going on. Something's going to happen with this basement. So here I have an example. Um, this is just the beginning of uh, Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. So it says, once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. So again, this is only just the, the beginning of the raven, but we have some repetition here. We have the tapping being mentioned twice, rapping. So um, that noise at the door is probably, you know, for me, when I first read this, I was wondering who's at the door, what's at the door, right? So we have all this emphasis of this sound at the door, creating suspense for the reader. So again, onomatopoeia and repetition, I think these two are, are pretty easy for us to remember. And possibly you've already, you know, learned this before. All right, characterization. Everyone knows about characterization because we've been talking about it for quite some time. So just a review, characterization is the way the author describes a character. An author may use indirect and direct characterization. So we know there's two types of characterization. Indirect, that's when we're using STEEL, that acronym. So we're looking at what the character is saying, thinking, their effect on others, their actions, or their looks. And then there's direct characterization, when we're being told straight up information about our character. So maybe they're telling us directly that, you know, Megan is creative and artistic. Um, you know, Robert is quiet and shy. So we have indirect and direct characterization. So we have an example. Richard couldn't help but notice Mr. Albertson's jet black beady eyes studying his every move. Richard desperately tried to remain calm, but couldn't shake an uneasy feeling that Mr. Albertson was not to be trusted. So here we have a lot going on. Um, we have some details about the appearance, right? We have the jet black beady eyes, so we could go with looks. Then we have the fact that, you know, Mr. Albertson um, is studying his every move. So that would be actions, right? He's like keeping a close eye on Richard. Then we have, you know, Richard's desperately trying to remain calm, right? He's trying not to freak out. But we have this uneasy feeling that Mr. Albert Albertson cannot be trusted. So right there, the author's kind of telling us that, you know, Mr. Albertson, he's a little fishy. We should be a little, you know, suspicious of him. So we have a mix here. So again, characterization, we see it in everything that we read, um, but now we're just gonna be focusing to see you know, how characterization is being utilized to help create suspense for us, the reader. All right, so on number five, imagery. Um, so this is when an author creates a picture and the reader's mind by appealing to the five senses. This definition should sound super familiar. So when we were discussing our reading strategies in the beginning of the year, um, one of the strategies that we focused on was visualize. And that's when you guys are trying to find descriptive detail throughout the text. So visualize and imagery are the same thing. Okay, so any example that you would typically label as visualize, now you know that this is imagery. And which not, what's nice is that the word imagery has image in it. So anything that's helping create that picture in your mind, that image in your mind, um, is going to be evidence for imagery. And we know that our five senses, we're thinking about how you know something might you know look, how it might sound, how it might smell, how it might taste, and how it might feel, right? So those five senses. So here we have an example. Her mother knew instantly that Kira had attempted to bake again. The thick, dark smoke was billowing out the window of the kitchen, and the faint smell of burnt chocolate clung to the curtains and walls. So here we have an example. We can see the thick, dark smoke as it's, you know, billowing. That means that it's, you know, like pouring out of the window. So this was, you know, not a good baking experience at all. And then we have the description of this faint smell of burnt chocolate. So we can almost kind of like smell that. It's not a good smell. So again, we have two senses. We can see the smoke and we can smell the burnt chocolate. So again, 
imagery is just like visualize. So this is a, like a repeat. This should be an easy one for us. Number six, we have pace. So pace is the speed at which the events are taking place in the story. So we have to think, you know, how you know slowly are things happening or how quickly are things happening? So, you know, if you're reading a novel, sometimes there are those chapters that you just breeze through because they're action packed. There's so many things happening. And then sometimes we have those chapters where, you know, it's not as eventful or maybe it's focusing more on character development or setting. So it kind of like slows the reader down a little bit. So pace um, is something that we need to focus on because those moments where the author is trying to, you know, speed things up or slow things down could be creating for us a feeling of suspense. Are we during those fast moments? Are we worried about our character? Are we feeling uneasy about our character? During those slow moments, are we questioning or wondering, you know, what's going to happen next? So again, pace is something to definitely focus on. And even when we're watching a movie, for example, there might be a slow start to the movie, but then it's, you know, rapid fire, all these things are happening, and then it might slow down again. So those things are done purposefully to create suspense. So whether we're reading or viewing, we should keep notice to the pace of the events. Okay, and our last one, Normally, I wait to introduce this last one, but I'm feeling confident that this is familiar to many of you, so I wanted to kind of just throw it in right away. So for uh, lucky number seven, we have foreshadowing. So foreshadowing is a literary device that writers utilize as a means to indicate or hint to readers something that is to follow or appear later in a story. So it's like a hint or a clue about something that's going to happen a little bit later on. Um, so I wanted to kind of highlight some ways that authors illustrate these hints. So sometimes it could be in dialogue. Maybe a character mentions something. And at first we're like, oh, you know, that's probably nothing important. But then later on we see that it was kind of hinting or, you know, pointing to something that could happen. Um, setting can also play a factor or like a, a weather change. So I think it's very common for us to see, you know, the description of a dark and stormy night. <laughs> so if we have this beautiful sunny day and then all of a sudden a storm starts coming in, sometimes that weather change, that change to the setting can, you know, be hinting to something bad that might happen. It's important to take notice to character reactions or behaviors. You know, if someone, you know, gives someone a look or says a comment or maybe the way they behave, maybe they step away from the, the character or they, they leave the scene. There's little things that at first glance seem small, but then later on as you read, you're like, oh, that was definitely a hint. And then the last one, omens. So sometimes it might be like a black cat's crossing a path or a mirror breaks, you know, those things that happen, those like typical unlucky incidents, they can also kind of hint to something bad that's going to occur. So again, we have seven elements of suspense. We have mood, imagery, characterization, repetition, onomatopoeia, pace, and foreshadowing. So it's a lot. As we continue throughout this unit, we're going to kind of chunk them. So as we read a story, we might only focus on two or three of these elements at a time, but it's important to know all seven from the get-go. So I wanted to introduce them all to you now. And then as we read our stories, we'll be focusing on individual elements at a time. So we're going to put our um, suspense elements to the test. In a minute, we're going to be checking out a movie clip. It's very brief. Your job is to be on the lookout for the seven elements of suspense. I'll tell you now that they might not all be present in the clip. Okay, so if you're stuck, if you can't find, let's say, foreshadowing or um, pace, that's okay. There might not all be there, but there's definitely a few. So you need to be on the lookout. Um, so you're going to, in a second, have a document handy. We're going to check out this movie clip, and your job is to identify as many elements of suspense as you can, okay? And you have the seven to browse through. So we will be doing that shortly. <laughs> 